Hey everyone, Dr. Nussi from EasyDOTPhysicals.com back again with another video and in this one we're talking all about THC half-life and how we can use this information to get a better understanding for how long THC metabolites may stay in your system and then can be detected on a drug test. So first, just a very uh, quick and dirty and easy way to understand half-life. The concept is obviously important if we're going to be talking about THC half-life and eliminating uh, the THC metabolites. So half-life is basically the amount of time, so it is a measurement of time, it's the amount of time that it takes for a substance concentration to be cut in half. So just giving you a real easy example here, if the concentration of substance A is 100, how long does it take for the concentration to become 50? And then how long does that 50 take to become 25 and so on? So that is basically what half-life is. All right, so how do we use that information to make a determination on how long THC metabolites might stay in your system and can be detectable on a drug test. And I'm going to point specifically to a research article. I'm gonna to try to link that article in the description box below. YouTube has give, been giving me fits about when I link to a uh, research article that's related to marijuana, they demonetize my videos, etc. But I'm gonna to try to put that link in the description box below. If it's down there, that means that they're okay with it, basically. So this article stated that after an individual used marijuana, immediately, three hours later, so three hours later, so their immediate concentration of metabolites in their urine rose to 180 nanograms per milliliter. So why is that concentration important? So if that is as high as it goes, if 180 nanograms per milliliter is the highest concentration that you'll get from using marijuana, in your urine, so the metabolites in your urine. And what typically drug tests are looking for is a cutoff of 50 nanograms per milliliter. So you have to go under 50 nanograms per milliliter to test negative for THC on a drug test. And that is exactly the same concentration of the home drug test that I recommend uh, from Exploro. A link to that drug test will be in the description box below. I certainly recommend home testing if you are concerned with an upcoming drug test. And also, please, check out exploroacademy.com. This is a comprehensive 30-minute course on exactly what you should and shouldn't be doing if you've got an upcoming drug test. We guarantee that you will pass your upcoming THC drug test if you take the uh, course. So I will leave both of those links in the description box below. Okay, so if you're trying to get to 50 nanograms per milliliter and you're starting off at 180 nanograms per milliliter, half-life becomes very important because when you go from 180 nanograms per milliliter and take that in half to go to 90 nanograms per milliliter, that becomes the half-life. So the question then becomes obviously, what is that time frame? Now again, there's more science to this and I, again, I will try to leave it in the description box below, but it's estimated that the half-life can vary from one and a half days to about seven days and the variability in that time basically depends on how heavy of a user you are. So if you are using THC marijuana daily, then you can probably expect that the half-life be seven days. If you are only occasionally using THC marijuana, maybe your half-life is only one and a half days. But it is still important to understand that that doesn't mean you test clean in one and a half or seven days because half-life is the time that it takes for that concentration to be cut in half. So here is the example for both a light and a heavy user. So a light user would start off at 180 nanograms per milliliter. In one and a half days, that initial dose, that initial concentration would be cut in half. So that would be 90 nanograms per milliliter. If you took a drug test on that day, just because it has been cut in half, it would still be over that 50 nanograms per milliliter cutoff. 
So then you wait another half-life, so one and a half more days, so three days total. That 90 then becomes 45, which is just under the 50 nanogram per milliliter cutoff. So again, on one of our recommended home drug tests, you will most likely get a very faint line in the test field indicating that it is a negative test, but very close to the cutoff level of 50 nanograms per milliliter. And then for a heavy user, the same scenario applies. It's just a longer time frame. That initial 180 nanogram per milliliter concentration of metabolites in the urine gets cut in half in seven days, one week to get to 90 nanograms per milliliter. And then again, we start at 90 nanograms per milliliter and we cut that in half to get to 45 nanograms per milliliter, but that's an additional seven days. So a total of two weeks. So from three days all the way up to two weeks in a heavy user to get under that 50 nanograms per milliliter cutoff, that magic number. So does that mean that an individual, even the heaviest use individual, will have a maximum time that they can test positive after abstaining from THC marijuana of two weeks? So at 15 days, does that mean you're guaranteed to pass a drug test? Well, if you have seen any of my videos, you know that that is unfortunately not true. There are other factors at play. The federal government even goes as far as gives an estimation for how long they think that somebody could test over that 50 nanograms per milliliter cutoff after abstaining from use. And they estimate all the way as low as three days. So the uh, half-life calculation basically twice. So that would be a light user all the way up to two months or more. So why is this? Uh, we just determined that the half-life, the amount of time that that 180 nanograms per milliliter can get cut down to under 50 nanograms per milliliter is at maximum for even the heaviest user two weeks. Well, the issue unfortunately is the problem with marijuana is that it is THC is fat soluble, can live in body fat and then be re-released later in time. So even if you haven't used, your body could still secrete uh, metabolites and then in your urine they can be detected on a drug test. So again, I've done comprehensive videos on uh, body fat and how it relates to um, metabolism of THC, but that can play a role as well. But if you're very, very lean, very, very fit, your testing times are going to be much closer to that uh, half-life of either um, one and a half days or seven days, again, depending on if you very rarely use or are a daily user. All right, so I hope that somewhat cleared up the half-life calculation and how it pertains to THC. Until next time, everybody, stay safe.